the staking foreignness for divineness. Mistaking foreignness for godliness. Mistaking foreignness for something outside this world. So what I want to talk about is something that's not easy to explain. But I'm going to give it a try. A lot of Muslims who are converts might mistake foreignness for something that is not part of this world. So I'll use myself as an example so I'm not coming off as if I'm speaking for all converts. So for me, when I converted to Islam in my 20s, Islam was this foreign concept. It was a foreign religion in the sense that it was not part of my upbringing. It was not part of my culture. It was not part of my America. So when I first got into Islam, some of the things that I was learning was foreign. A prime example is the language. And specifically, it's when you pray in Arabic. So as an example, when I would pray in Arabic, for me, I was mistaken that foreign language as something divine, something outside this world. Now, I'm not saying the Arabic in the Islamic prayer is not divine, and I'm not saying it is divine. I'm not even talking about that. That's a whole nother topic. What I'm talking about is mistaking that I was tapping into something outside this world because it was foreign. Arabic for me was and still is a foreign language. So when I was praying in Arabic, I felt as if I was going towards God more. Because for me, again, I'm speaking about me. God is this concept outside of existence. God is the creator outside of creation. So God, in a sense, is a mystery. And Arabic, for me at that time, was in a sense a mystery. It was foreign. And God seems like this foreign being who exists outside of creation as the creator. So, in my opinion, looking back, I believe I was, in a way, practicing idolatry because I was mistaking foreignness for getting closer to God.
So I use that as an example because, I don't know, maybe 10 years or more ago, I started seeing this among Americans who do yoga. I'm a yoga teacher. I've been teaching yoga and practicing yoga as long as I have been a Muslim. And actually, I don't just teach yoga. I teach the philosophical understanding and the history of yoga. But what I noticed among a lot of Americans was they were mistaking, in my opinion, mistaking the foreignness of some aspects of yoga as something that was not worldly, as if it was connecting them to something outside themselves. And yoga is within yourself, but for this video, they were believing that they were connecting to something that was, for a lack of a better word, divine. And when I started realizing that, I looked at my own journey as a Muslim and realized that's what I was doing in the beginning when I first became a Muslim. So I was mistaking that this religion called Islam was God sent because it was foreign. Now I'm not saying it's not God sent and I'm not saying that it is God sent. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about mistaking foreignness for divineness, for something that exists outside this world. And in a sense, Islam did exist outside my world, my world, because I didn't grow up around Islam. I didn't grow up around people speaking Arabic. So it was outside my world. And when I got into Islam, part of liking it is mistakenly thinking that it was divine because it was born. So I just thought I would share that. It's not easy to explain. Um, I could probably do better on the explanation, but I would have to really think about it. It's been a concept in my head for a long time, but I just thought I would make a video about it and maybe talk to that convert and say, hey, are you mistaking something as divine because it's foreign or something that is special because it's foreign? Not that it's not special, but are you thinking it's special because it's foreign? So, anyways, peace and love.